You're invited to imagine what's next. What the next view you wake up to will be. Where your next adventures will start from. Your perfect space to entertain. And your sanctuary to unwind in. As you begin to imagine your new place, we'll be here to help you find it. Because nothing compares to what's next. Sotheby'sRealty.com We are putting India's Millennium City Gurugram under the scanner today. Be it the Prime Minister flagging off a new metro line for the city or the completion of the long-awaited Dwarka Expressway or real estate prices or housing prices jumping almost 40 to 50 percent in the last two and a half years. The city is making all the right noises. On the urban agenda, we ask how much will this green transport and road network alone boost livability in Gurgaon? What are the missing pieces that the government must step up on to truly make Gurugram a global best? Now, before we get our experts to weigh in on the answer, here are the basic facts. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid the foundation stone of Gurugram's metro on 16th February 2024. The proposed metro line will run from Millennium City Centre to Udyog Vihar Phase 5 via Cyber City and Old Gurgaon. Now, altogether, there are 27 elevated stations planned. There will also be an interchange at the rapid metro station and a proposed extension to Dwarka Sector 21. The main stretch of the metro will be 26.65 kilometers long and there is also a 1.85 kilometers spur to Dwarka Expressway. The estimated project cost is about 5,450 crores and the promise is that it will be delivered by 2020. Six, at least the first phase of it. Now, the other big excitement driving Gurugram's real estate market is the completion of the Dwarka Expressway and its expected inauguration in April this year. Also called the Northern Peripheral Road or NPR, this eight-lane highway is a crucial one that connects Delhi to Gurugram. It spans 29 kilometers and was started way back in 2016 to ease the traffic congestion of NH48 which is also known as the Delhi Gurugram Expressway. Now, after several missed deadlines and exceeding the approved cost by as much as 14 times, there is a huge sigh of relief amongst those who bought homes along the expressway, expecting it to be operational at least 10 years before today. Hear out Hari Bhagwan, the president of Oyster Grand Sector 102 Gurgaon, on what the citizens are expecting from these two key infrastructure initiatives. We are expecting this Dwarka Expressway is going to reduce travelling time to airport, to Delhi, to other office uh, area like Cyber Hub, Uda City Centre. And in future, once the metro gets completed, certainly economy activity will increase this side also lot of uh, offices will have this side also. All right, let's dive into what this boost will bring to Gurugram. After all, the Millennium City alone accounts for 65% of Haryana's tax earnings, one single city. Joining me for the discussion are Anshul Jain, MD India and Southeast Asia and Head of APAC Tenant, Rep. Kushman in Wakefield, also with us, Rajit Matthews, Program Director at WRI India. Rajit and Anshul, thank you very much for joining me. Anshul, are you already negotiating or te your team rather is negotiating higher leases with the metro announcement or just not yet? You know, I, Manisha, I think just not yet. Uh, I think it's great to see uh, uh, the initiatives that's been announced and, and with Prime Minister's involvement. Uh, an inauguration, one hopes that uh, the project will be delivered uh, within the times timelines. But I think the number of infrastructure projects in Gurgaon and uh, they probably need to be looked at in, in totality. So uh, clearly there's one phase of Metro, which is which is very exciting. Um, and the fact that the Dwarka Expressway will get completed uh, after years and years of us sort of hearing that uh, there's this road that's going to get completed. Lots of residential came up on, on that uh, site. Uh, which um, you know suffered greatly because uh, the road was never delivered. Uh, I do think 
uh, that besides these two aspects, there are still a number of other sort of infrastructure links that needs to be worked. Nevertheless, I think whatever movement is is great movement, uh, and I you know um, and it'll benefit uh, the movement of people uh, is congestion, and that always is to the benefit of uh, the larger office sector and the residential sector mm. in the area. So very I'm, excited about that. Absolutely, it's a magnet for all these global uh, fortune. 500 companies and global companies, uh, they've been coming to Gurugram with or without the infrastructure. The talent is there, the high rises are there and the skyline is there. All right. Rajit, um, give me a sense of uh, how do you see the economic potential boost of the Millennium City with uh, both the connectivity with Dwarka Expressway completing in April and also more importantly a metro and, and very strict deadlines. 2026 is just around the corner. It's not too far away. Right. So uh, we see these projects as connective infrastructure. They're basically strategic projects. When you have these kind of projects, it kind of de-risks your economy as well. And I'll give you an example. You know, I live in Gurgaon, but I work in Delhi. You might stay in Delhi and tomorrow your studios might be in Noida. So it actually de-risks the, the place you work in. You know, so supposing the kind of job I work in, in a particular location, isn't there anymore? You know, my life is not collapsing because I'll go to Noida instead and find a job there. I can go within 60 minutes through a metro rail. So these are connective infrastructure. They are key to economic efficiency and productivity. So whether it's, you know, metro rail, whether it's expressways, whether it is, you know, an airport, for example, you know, the boom of Gurgaon is thanks to airport and many other reasons, right? It grew, grew in the last 20 years. So these are critical infrastructure projects. The next question is, how do you bring in efficiency to infrastructure versus you know putting the connectivity in place so that's that's another thing to talk about okay i'll come back to you uh, so anshul give me a sense of uh, you know the real estate scenario where is gurugram compared to let's say a bkc or some of the key areas in bengaluru when it comes to rents that uh, tenants are willing to pay and do you see with this new connectivity you know the Dwarka Expressway also coming up with a new central business district. Like right now, it's all cyber hub concentrated, right? With something moving now to Golf Course Extension. But we still haven't seen a proper hub like cyber hub. Do you think something is coming up? Uh, we talk, hear about global city. Give me your views. I'm sure you have like a crystal ball. So first of all, comparison with uh, a Mumbai, uh, BKC or, or Bangalore, uh, I think you know, it's it's very simple. Wherever you see roads and railways and wherever you see people, uh, ability of people to reach, uh, I think you see mushrooming of, of office sector. Once the office gets formed in a certain area, it's, um, you know, that becomes the magnet because there's a lot of peripheral activity that happens, whether it's retail, uh, whether it's kind of F&B, uh, which is food and beverage. Um, and just concentration of offices, so you've got a lot many people working there and people like to go in that area. It all starts with infrastructure, right? And therefore, if you look at Gurgaon, um, why is Cyber City successful? Of course, DLF has done lots of very good things in terms of developing that kind of local area and their own parks. Uh, but it started because it had great connectivity from Delhi, uh, which uh, and, and subsequently great connectivity from other parts of Gurgaon to Cyber City. Um, the peripheral, and, and therefore, if you see Gurgaon, there's Cyber City area, there's NHH, and perhaps Gulf Coast Road, which is, um, as people who live in Gurgaon know, that Gulf Coast Road is another world-class road. So those are the three or four kind of main hubs for commercial activity. As other areas emerge and as it becomes easier for people to reach in those areas, certainly office activity will start. But from a future of Gurgaon, I think the next level of office activity is likely to be southern peripheral road um, and then the northern peripheral road dwarka expressway these will come at different rental price points uh, so you'll always have cyber city which will command a premium gulf coast road which will come up, command a premium uh, and then you got spr and northern peripheral road or npr which will then trade at suitable discounts which will then ensure that corporates with all level of affordability can find suitable office mm. spaces in Gurgaon, which right. at the moment is kind of missing because, you know, you only have sort of, you know, premium options in premium locations. But if, if, if a corporate wants premium option in perhaps 
not so premium location, it's kind of hard for them to find and, and because people can't reach in those locations. Okay. I think you've uh, really outlined an important point that, you know, Gurgaon has also become expensive because the office space now is very occupied. I mean, it's pretty much occupied what you have in, in the central business district around Cyber Hub. Uh, but let me uh, flip back. You spoke about DLF and Rajit here's I will connect it to your question on efficiency. You know, KP Singh, the chairman of DLF, he expressed his deep disappointment in the way Gurgaon has shaped up, right? Um, he said, look, you're taking EDC from developers, but if you look at what the government or the state authorities are providing on internal roads and other amenities are simply missing. So here's my question when you talk about the economic potential of let's say a metro or a Dwarka expressway how do you truly make it efficient I mean whether it's last mile connectivity and other ideas which you think must be thought through along with the metro project right so in fact you know whether it's DLF or some of the big builders in this region uh, they've really benefited from the public private partnership model that Gurgaon took you know in the you know for the past few decades, in fact. So the joint development model actually brought in private developers. Uh, where they need some improvement is while you give large parcels of land to developers to develop, you know, they actually have this whole colonizer, you know, license and they can develop it, etc. What we've seen is, you know, sort of the commons have been left out. Uh, so while inside you have islands of excellence, everything else outside, which is in the public domain, uh, whether it's walking infrastructure, whether it's the greens, uh, all of that outside of these, you know, sort of islands of excellence are not at the best quality that they could be. Um, so there is that mismatch between within a boundary and outside of a boundary. Uh, the other question, I mean, just to come in on, you know, sort of Gurgaon's trends, right, like that you were asking uh, our colleague here, uh, we must recognize that Gurgaon is part of the economic capital of India. Um, it is part of this whole region, which is Delhi, you know, Gurgaon, Faridabad, Noida, it's all a big region. It is the economic capital of India. It actually overtook Mumbai, uh, you know, a few years ago. So it's actually the economic capital. You have a certain, you know, specialty within Gurgaon. Previously, in terms of jobs, it was largely, you know, sort of textile, automobile, all of that is still dominant. But the new sectors that are coming in, sort of the new economies, whether it's IT, ITS, management consulting, they're all coming here. Mm. And for that, you need better infrastructure. Um, so you need to hit the tertiary sector now in terms of your infrastructure. And, and Metro Rail is a great collector for it. In fact, the WRI report that you shared with me talks about how NCT, the national capital territory that you talk about, is going to be the largest in the world in a few years? Right. So it is already sort of the second most populous agglomeration. We talk about agglomerations because they are one big region, you know, you can divide it up into Gurgaon is for, you know, sort of Haryana and Noida is for Uttar Pradesh, but they're all connected, like physically also they're contiguous and the metro rail connects all of them. So we are seeing that in a few years, the UN predicts that in the next few years, it's going to be the largest agglomeration by population in the world, where it will overtake Tokyo. Tokyo is the largest agglomeration as of now. Uh, so we are see going to see that uh, trajectory. Another thing is migration into this region. We are seeing that they are coming to the periphery, the southern peripheries, not to Delhi anymore. I'm talking about the educated migrant. Mm -hmm. They are coming to Gurgaon, they're coming to Noida. So the boom we are seeing in terms of office infrastructure is because of this as well. The educated migrant is coming here. So yeah. they will And, and therefore we need to live up to that expectation. So we're going to take a quick short break, but when we return, we focus on some of the missing pieces of Gurugram's livability. It's falling ranking in the Swat Sarvekshan, it's dwindling green cover, rising air pollution. After all, you know, it takes a lot more than just roads and transport for a city to offer a quality of life that its citizens truly deserve. I mean, especially the migrants who are coming and adding to economic value and paying the taxes to the Haryana government. Stay with us.
You're invited to imagine what's next. What the next view you wake up to will be. Where your next adventures will start from. Your perfect space to entertain. And your sanctuary to unwind in. As you begin to imagine your new place, we'll be here to help you find it. Because nothing compares to what's next. Sotheby'sRealty.com Welcome back to the Urban Agenda where Gurgaon, the millennium city, is under our lens. Now moving on from the city's infra boost with a proposed metro infrastructure project to shed light on the other aspects that are not really so bright. It's important to note that any heavy rains effectively bring the city to a halt and Gurgaon has slipped on cleanliness with its latest Swachh Sarvekshan ranking. And the city's green cover is dwindling as well. Anshul, I know that... Uh, it's literally something that, you know, you get used to. The first year, about five years ago, when we hit the peak air pollution, and I remember just around Diwali, we had hit a number that our uh, air quality meters could not even capture. It had gone beyond 900. What are the tenants saying now about the missing pieces of quality of life? Have they all got used to it? It's uh, the biggest worry, uh, Manisha, because, you know, particularly after COVID, uh, the employee health, safety, well-being has become really high on corporate agendas. Um, so, and as I talk to sort of fellow professionals, there's a lot of discussion among senior professionals whether Delhi, Gurgaon area is worth sort of, you know, living in and, and staying. Of course, when people's sort of, you know, careers and livelihoods are rooted in a particular city, it's hard for people to just get up and leave. Uh, but it's it's definitely very high on agenda. This is now being discussed, you know, particularly when multi-city requirements come up or decisions between basing yourself in Gurgaon versus other cities come up. In that ranking, Gurgaon fails quite miserably. And we've seen more than often where companies say, okay, we are ranking cities where we want to go, but Gurgaon is failing because primarily of air pollution and therefore we will not go to Gurgaon. And there are examples of that. Hmm. Uh, there are examples where people are saying, if we want to expand, let's expand in other cities, but not in Gurgaon, because, you know, there is um, there is a, there is an issue around air pollution. And to your point on air pollution, I, you know, there's a point where it was around Diwali and winters, and pretty much now it's around the year. Yes, you know, we all who live in Gurgaon have gotten used to it, and there's a standing joke uh, where uh, in New York had an air pollution of 150, I think, because of Canadian fires last year. And that was such a big discussion. And, and I spoke to my fellow um, colleagues who had actually just relocated from India to New York. And, and they said that, look, you know, this this is kind of uh, seems uh, usual. Mm. Um, I do think to the previous point that uh, the government needs to look after Gurgaon. Um, if we are saying that national capital territory is going to be the largest sort of economic uh, uh, producing, or at least from a service perspective, largest e e economic uh, economic production area in India, uh, or perhaps the world, as as we just heard. Um, and I think in your opening, you said Gurgaon is the biggest sort of you know tax contributor to Haryana. You need to look after your golden. Mm. Is is as simple as that. Is as right? simple as that. I think there is still a lot of ground that the government needs to cover, which is quite obvious, Rajit. You know, my thing when we come back to air pollution, forget about the waste and everything. I'm sure. You know, we've already spoken about the figures and it needs to be done. It's just, but something which has always irked me, this is a city which has been built for just private vehicles, isn't it? I mean, other than the metro, if you look at Gurgaon, there are no pedestrian pathways. There are no cycling ways. Truly in a day of sustainable cities, right? Um, it has such a big opportunity to turn around on those fronts, but I see no initiative on those fronts at all. I mean, you're building more underpasses to make it easier for cars to move, but you're not doing anything for pedestrians and cyclists. Right. I think you really hit on the weak spot of Gurgaon. Um, while we build sort of what we call as economic infrastructure, you also need infrastructure for quality of life. And that's the part which is, you know, sort of dwindling right now. So while you have the metro rail, you still need, you know, sort of buses and other forms of public transport to connect to the rest of the areas. You need better walking infrastructure. You mentioned walking. 
and you know putting in sort of those underground passageways for walking like those subways for walking i mean no woman is going to risk going under that ground you know you you see the one near ambient small you know you, you wouldn't risk going there I'd rather risk my life running across those lanes you know so uh, you know being more thoughtful uh, you know sort of really look at quality of life you need at grade walkways you need continuous walkways you need better green spaces open spaces so all of this quality of life infrastructure including then the waste management the you know uh, sewerage the drainage i mean we are flooding not because of excess rain i mean we just don't have the drainage. stormwater drainage right. systems in the city so uh, yeah all of that really needs to be up and uh, and i think right it's high time that if you're getting 65 to 70% revenues from a city please even though your vote bank is in other parts of haryana start focusing on the city there is edc that the government also collects from developers private developers so all of it i think the focus must be on making the city all round livable rather than just giving it some world class metro and dwarka expressway which is also important but truly does not completely round up a great quality of life anshul jain and rajit thank you very much for joining me today pleasure to have you both with us well let's close today's discussion with a small but important wish list from a citizen representative of kurugram here's what he has to say for his city goodbye and thanks so much for watching yeah we first i feel the basic amenities for the public like uh, your parks your sports complex second i feel we should have this uh, drainage proper drainage system and waste management sustainable waste waste management system in the gurgaon and third i feel we have lot of greenery require lot of planting actually in the city these three are basically priority work to be done taken over by the government on the priority basically You're invited to imagine what's next. What the next view you wake up to will be. Where your next adventures will start from. Your perfect space to entertain. And your sanctuary to unwind in. As you begin to imagine your new place, we'll be here to help you find it. Because nothing compares to what's next. Sotheby'sRealty.com